There, okay. I can see hi, you hi, now. Hi. Okay, hello, hello. You. Okay. 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 Um, oh, there he is. He's on his belly right now, so mm. his head's kind of into the pillow with some uh, towels kind of supporting the tube and everything. Okay, okay. Can you see him? I can. Thank you so much. If you want to. I can see him. Hi, Papa. I love you. I'm coming near today. I've been talking to Jack and Granny, and Kenny Pooh misses you. We love you, and we're praying for you. Is there anybody else that wants to see him? I'm home alone. Okay. Um, okay. Let me show you. I'll kind of back up and kind of show you everything from a bigger perspective. So, oh, God. Yeah, he's prone, which means he's laying on his belly. Okay. And, yeah. uh, He's got uh, the ventilator hooked up over here. Yeah. And he's got uh, the sheets are off because he had 101 fever earlier today. Oh, and yeah. Did they start? Oh, I need a list of the antibiotics. He has, he's very sensitive to antibiotics. He doesn't respond to them very well. Okay. And this is his monitor. Yeah. Yeah. So his vital signs are stable. His heart rate is slow, but that's probably from the sedation he's on. Yeah. And then here's the IV pumps and drips and things. Let's see if I can get this. Okay. Yeah. Did they start the paralytic back? No, he's not on a paralytic today. Okay. Okay. Right, Papa. I guess probably Papa. around nine or ten o'clock tonight. Uh -huh. The next shift will be turning him back over and laying him on his back. Okay. Uh, he, he seemed to show some agitation the last time they did it, so they put they only left him six hours and put him back. Yeah, it's just kind of play it by ear. Like right now, the 18 hours on his tummy, he's doing okay. Okay. But everything that we do could cause him problems, you know? So the night shift nurse, when they go to turn him back over, sometimes it's kind of rocky course for a little while. You know, you kind of stir things up, and the breathing can go bad. The heart rate can go bad. Yeah. Blood pressure just kind of depends, but I haven't had to do that to him. So, so far, so good for me. Okay. Can you see him okay? Yeah, I see him. Okay. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. There's his face. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But uh, uh, he's got uh, fentanyl for pain. He's got propofol for sedation. He's got levofed for his blood pressure. He's got a couple of antibiotics. Okay. And, um, I mean, his vital signs are... His vital signs are stable with everything that we're doing. You know, he's hanging in there, okay. but it's a lot. It's okay. a lot, you know? Okay. Yeah, it's a lot. Papa, Richard Vogel, you come home. Your wife says she's going to spank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this yeah. has been really stressful here for everybody. I know you guys, too. This yes. is it's really bad for everybody. Yeah, it really is. Not being able to come there. And yeah. See him. Now, when would he? When did he get admitted? If you could remind me. Oh, uh, so, uh, like, I, was it like the seventh or the eighth of December or something? I believe so. He was tested. His test came back positive the first. A yeah. week later, he was he was disoriented and walking around with no clothes on and trying to oh, eat a yeah. dish towel. So yeah. my mother in law brought him to the hospital yes. then, yeah. and um. That's when they did the blood cat gas test and found out that he was lacking oxygen. Yes. And that's what's kind of what was going on. But we still don't understand how did he get on a ventilator. He was perfectly fine talking to his brother yeah. and family. And then we woke up the next day. He's in a coma. So well, um, usually, well, it's just like, you know, I'll ask Dr. Doherty to call you. But how that happens, you know, normally it, so I can let you see him as I talk. Okay. Let me put the. I got the TV on for him. Hold on. Let me okay. check this off. <laughs> so normally, you know. He like old TV really shows. Fast with COVID. <laughs> I mean, you know, it takes its toll on your organs. And his lungs have a, uh, where's he at? Here he is. His lungs have infiltrates in that. You might have heard that ground glass look that the COVID patients get. Oh, no, um, I didn't know that. What happens that. is you just, your, your lung tissue just doesn't oxygenate anymore you know and all yeah. the confusion he was having was related to low oxygen content in his blood 
So the, you can't really give enough oxygen, you know, soup, you know, on the outside with masks and cannulas and stuff. You really have mm -hmm. to deliver it straight down into his body. Into the bloodstream. And for anybody who gets intubated and put on a ventilator, they have to be sedated and put into a coma for because they they would pull the tube out if they could, you know. Okay. So you have to give them heavy sedation just so they can lay there and let us take care of them. Not only that, but the sedation decreases the workload of breathing for him. If I can keep him out and do all the work of breathing for him, he's got a better chance to get better. I mean, okay. we can't have him kind of fighting us and to being delirious and everything while we're trying to take care of him with all these these yeah. tubes and wires and. Yeah. His oxygen level will be the best if he just lays still and lets the machine do its work. <sighs> okay. So he's on some steroids. He's on antibiotics. And it's just going to take time. We probably won't know a whole lot for a week or two. This is not a fast process. Really? You're right. So how, yeah. how, how long should we, we look forward to seeing him in ICU like this? Well, you'll just have to do it like this every day. I don't think things are going to change anytime soon. Um, I mean, okay, all. so, so, because we were basically, I do keep a register. I do keep up with his, um, okay. um, O2 sense, his, all his tests and, and, and how, how much oxygen he's getting. So it doesn't matter because it can still change. Because I'm thinking, okay, he's doing better. You know, he's improving. Yeah. He's improving. He's going to be able to get out. But we're not accustomed to having anybody be this sick or not understanding I a understand sickness like this. I understand that this is not normal, not right. for anybody. Right. And this is such an in, intense kind of stuff that most people don't have any idea what I'm talking about or with the questions and answers you were asking. This is way, this is like high level ICU care. Most families, if they could be here, wouldn't even understand. But um, a lot of this, you just have to lay your trust in the staff, you know, the doctors and the nurses taking care of them. Everything possible for a COVID patient with what he's got is called ARDS, the adult respiratory distress syndrome, where the lungs get kind of stiff and not compliant and they don't oxygenate. And you have to kind of let the body get over that. And it's an inflammatory response that your immune system sets up and it takes, that's why he's on steroids and you just have to let it run its course and hope that the inflammation goes down and there's some healthy lung tissue left to work with that we can get him off the ventilator then. Oh, I so can't that's the whole tell process you. And that's, Thank it takes you a for while that. for this to resolve. It's not something that in a day or two, he's going to be a lot different. Okay. Patients sometimes lay like this for a month. So I don't know, you know, what his course will be, but, um, we, we have, you know, he's on what I consider like a moderate amount of support, 50% mm. oxygen and 12 a peep is kind of moderate help. We've got people on a hundred oxygen and 14 or 16 of peep. I mean, so he's mm. not as bad as it can be, but I mean, he could get worse and not better. We don't know. Okay. But uh, we're praying that he gets better. We're doing everything we can yes, to get him better. We and, are. uh, we do blood gases twice a day. You know, he'll uh, continue to get prone and flipped every, you know, on um, by protocol and uh, be supported through the process. And hopefully he'll come out on the better side. Yeah. Okay. And I know my, my sister-in-law was in, my sister-in-law was in on the ventilator for 39 days. Um, so, wow. and, and she's at home today. So oh, I know it's possible. She's in a home or at home? She's at home. At home. Good. Yes, she's at home. Well, there are people who get COVID like this who do recover. You see them on the yeah, news. Yeah. So it's not impossible. Yeah. It's just really hard. And yeah. you just got to be realistic about the fact that this is a slow process. And sometimes it takes things like tracheostomies and feeding tubes to get people the, the amount of time that they need to get past this. <sighs> his, his skin looks good, though. He looks so His good. skin is good. His skin's yeah. fine. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Um, I love you, Papa. Too. I can do my iPhone if we can't get that Zoom going. I'll talk to Kevin again okay. and ask him if he can somehow get that arranged for your uh, emails. Or maybe I need to work on getting one donated or something because let me know how you all need help in there. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's yeah, it's the iPads and, and people who have time, you know, to uh, go room to room. for. We got I will volunteer. I, I will volunteer. 
we get well you know we got like 45 icu beds and we got people double, doubled up in the covid unit two well, in a room uh, how do you how do you I, well i'm i'm first on a first name basis with diane and admin so i ask her about volunteering i would i would definitely uh, because i mean i i know what the I, families are going through well, I'll talk to Kevin because yeah, if we can get some more help with the Zoom, I would like, I, I would definitely home. volunteer. I, oh, I, I can I, I can that. send my driver's license in. They can do a background check. I'm no criminal or anything. I will and tell Kevin I would that, that that might be something they could really you know pursue because yeah. I know last week we had a nurse who I don't know what her normal title is, but you know how nurses got furloughed when COVID mm -hmm. got so bad because the floors mm -hmm. pretty much emptied out and everything yeah. went to the unit. Um, there was a nurse who uh, basically she just walked room to room all day and did did Zoom for us, and, and that's the yeah. help that we need. I would gladly do it. So let them well, know they can, they can. I don't know if we can act, get that acted on, but I'll certainly pass that on. Okay, uh, I would gladly help. So well, thank you. I will. Thank you. I I I can't thank you enough that I've been able to see him and I can <laughs> talk to the family and. I, I, I find I, I got a lot of peace out of this space time. So thank okay. you very much. Well, let me uh, call Kevin again. Like I said, I'm not, you know, I'm telling you the truth. I have called him. Mm -hmm. I know I spoke. Oh, no. I, I didn't even think it was your responsibility. I, I just thought it was I somebody know. else's job. I'm like, I you think. have enough to do. I didn't, I didn't yeah, even expect for you to be doing it. I carry my cell phone in my pocket and mm -hmm. as I get little pockets of time, this is easy for me to do. I can't do oh. it. Set up the email links and, do all that yeah, but they you. they know they uh they can get something uh in order for your family i'll tell them yeah. if they please can call you and reach out to get those yeah. emails from you yes thank you thank you thank you yeah. i'm gonna, I'm gonna call his brother so he can see him okay and Did his you do wife it? okay yeah. do you want me to take a little video